good things. <clears throat> I think he's a novelist, especially. He comes hardy on page 260. 1840 to 1928, spent most of his life in the country of Dorset in South England. South England. Well, even in that case, Although he had an early interest in poetry, like he was uh, quickly yourself. discouraged um, by rejections from editors, so he turned to fiction, a, a more financially sure secure option. Spent 16 years studying architecture, and most of it as an apprentice in London, and read a widely in his spare time. Hardy enjoyed some success from his fiction, though it was uneven. The same year, far from the mandating crowd, the novel most, most celebrated in his lifetime was published, 1874. He finally had the means to marry Emma Lavinia Gifford, a number of his books were serialized in magazines, which often request, requested that Hardy edit out material that could be offensive to readers. The critical dissent following the publication of the sexually progressive Jew, the obscure, obs, 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 obscure? Mm -hmm. okay. 1895, finally moved him to abandon fiction for poetry. Hardy's wife died in 1912, and two years later he married his former secretary. His ashes were buried in Westminster Abbey. His heart, as it, and his request, was buried in the Stainsford churchyard in the grave of his first wife and beside his father. Interesting. Okay, let's start reading these poems. We're going to start with... Uh, Noah today, so what a heap human means, man. So, hap, hap, okay, what happens? Hap, okay, I have no idea what that is. Usually for happenstance, <laughs> I don't know. <clears throat> if but some vengeful god would call to me from up the sky and laugh, thou suffering thing, know that thy sorrow is my ecstasy that thy love's loss is my hate's profiting. Then I would bear it, clinch myself, and die, steeled by the sense of ire unmerited, half eased in that a powerfuler than I had willed and meted me the tears I shed. But not so. How arrives it joy lies slain, and why unblooms the best hope ever sown? Crafts Casualty obstructs the sun and rain, and dicing time for gladness casts a moan. These purblind doomsters had as readily strown blisses about my pilgrimage as pain. Wow, that is a, what a crass casualty stands for. I forget for what crass means. No idea. Well, I'll rather move on. So. <laughs> Okay, Naomi. I look into my glass. I look into my glass and view my wasting skin and say, Would God it come to pass my heart had shrunk as thin? For then I undistress. Mm -hmm. oh. Undistressed. My heart's gro grown cold to me. Could lonely wait my endless rest with. Equan equanimity. Equanimity? What does that mean? I have mean? no idea. Equanimity? That's. Does it mean? What is that word? Even means. I think even temper, even, even in, in feelings, something like that. Tranqu like some sense of tranquility, but not necessarily. I'm, not, I'm just guessing, okay? So. Yeah, but mental calmness. Mental okay. calmness, exactly. So. Composure, evenness and temper. So I'm guessing right. So good. <laughs> but time can make me grieve. Heart steals, lets part abide, and shakes this fragile frame at eve without with throbbings of noontide. Okay. So let me query a little bit. Do you understand the poem? Mm -hmm. A little bit? No, okay. Let me ask you this. 
part steals, let the part abide. What a part means? What it stands for? What part? What is part? A body part? A part of a tree? A part of the world? Yes, I know the part means. And the, what it stands for. Which, whose part it is. According to the poem. Noah, what is it? I think it's, well, I mean, the way I saw it, it was like, it's like saying, in a less poetic way, partly steals and lets abide on the other hand. Like uh. not actually stealing a part. That's the way I saw it. But what it, what it stands for? It's part of your nose, part of your hair, part of something. The poem is actually hinted at you. It's part of a tie, right? So, yeah. so that's part of the skills of an English poem, right? So you wanted to, you know, part now is not necessarily has, and that part of something has just directly said it because the part, uh, the, the the subject already preceded the following sentence, so you can carry it on. So, that's an interesting skill. So, modern English poem writing don't do that, but Asian write, Asian uh, old English to do that all the time. I like this poem very much. It's sad, but right? uh, comment, 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 comment. Understand it then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's let's unlock a little bit because it's similar poems, much easier for us as study materials. So, I look into my glass. We look in the mirror. The we my wasting skin is getting old. And said, Would God it come to pass? My heart has to shrink. I think so. He said, Is my heart also become old and aged? And like something bad, you know, happened to his heart. And then uh, on the dress, so he saw that he was worried about his heart getting cold and aged and not tender anymore, right? So not young anymore, so sad. And then he suddenly recognized, hmm, that's not too much bother. But the heart grew cold to me. So he said, my heart don't have a problem, but the people around me, their hearts are growing cold. So that's an interesting way to put it, right? So we're artistic. It's not such a good theme, but it's we're artistic. It's a cold, lonely with my endless rest with uh, equanimity. So he was querying, if this is the case, the rest of my life and spend it with no warm heart or tender heart around me, will I keep my heart in a place of tranquility and, and calmness. What does the word represent? Mental calmness, am I? Even it's in temper, something of that nature. But time to make me gray. So he's talking about the rest of life. He says it's like a time, am I? So same time. So basically life make me gray. Part still, less part abide. So some, I don't know, was that really implied? And she the fringe of framed ye with a throbbing unknown tide. That's interesting. No, what do you think of the last paragraph coming on? I think that there's this, like this expectation or feeling within his heart that expects, almost awaits death. Mm. That's what endless rest refers to. Yeah. My heart's grown cold to me, so referring to himself, could lonely wait my end endless rest with equanimity. But, and then it, it follows with time, but time to make me grieve, part steals, which is referring to the first stanzas, talking about how it's basically wasted him, that's what time done, and let's, and let's part abide. Mm. And then, so on the other hand, while time is stealing, it's also mm. causing me to... Uh, await what my heart yeah. is in a sense seeming to desire which is death yeah and shakes this fragile frame at eve it's dying so days. approaching mm. death yeah, yeah with throbbings of noontide noontime means the the time is good time so right so yeah yeah like the almost like the, the throb or the presence of 
like nope. a heartbeat almost in this eve yeah of yeah yeah approaching death so that's interesting this is this one is the poem perfectly explained why he wanted his heart buried with his first wife so this must really be the first love you know so something in nature so anyway so that's very interesting you know people were were sensitive and faithful to their hard feelings you know people don't do that often it's very very sensible and the faithful man to, to his inner feelings so well neutral tones your turn we stood by a pond that winter day and the sun was white as though what does that say chiden chiden of god mm. chide Should what chide it? means chided like chiden how it looks scolded scolded exactly mm. And a few leaves lay on the star starving sod. 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 Mm. They had fallen from an ash and were gray. Your eyes on me were as they, were as that, were as eyes that rove over tedious riddles of years ago. And some words played between us to and fro, on which lost more and. Which lost them more by a lot. The smile on your mouth was the deadest? The deadest thing. Mm -hmm. Deadest thing. Alive enough to have strength to die. And a grin of bitterness swept thereby. Like an ominous bird, a wing. A wing, what does this mean? Fly away, is it him, right? So, mm. Since then, keen lessons that love deceives, deceives mm -hmm. and rings with wrong have shaped to me your face and the God cursed sun and a tree and a pond edged with gray leaves. What does that mean? That's weird almost, am I right? So, let me see. I, don't, I wanted to. To read this little one to understand better. We stood by the pond that winter day. And the sun was white and the chidem of God. And a few leaves lay on the starving sound they have fallen from ash and were grey. Your eyes on me were as eyes at the roof over tedious riddles of years ago, and some words play between us to and fro, on which lost more by our love. A smile on your mouth was a deadly thing, a lie enough to have strength to die, and a green bitterness swept thereby, like ominous bird a wing. Since then, King lessons. The love he saves, he reigns with wrong, have shaped to me your face and the gun cursed song and the tree and the palm the air with the grayish leaves. So, we're talking about a sad loving story. It seems he would. He was being betrayed by this love or something like that. So disappointed with this love experience, him, right? So, so come with those same saying, cause a heartache later days. So that's how I read it. No, what is your interpretation? Yeah, I think mm -hmm. I think similarly along those lines. I it's think it's expressing what mm -hmm. uh, people often consider to be the opposite of love, which is indifference. Mm. So that's why even the title of the poem refers to that being neutral tones. Neutral tones. And the feeling mm. that the poem portrays is very has a very indifferent feeling too as well. Even though indifferent and feeling don't seem to go together. Yeah. Yeah. But he, he executes that pretty well. Yeah, and the following two or three and pretty long seems in excerpts from long longer poems. So we're going to read the last one. Elijah, your turn. Channel firing. Well, the, your your former former reader really is uh, is reading into the things. Oh, he's taking on notes, man. So, yeah. Wow. <laughs> <coughs>
Channel firing. That night, your great guns, unawares, shook all our coffins as we lay, and broke the channel, the ten, chancel window squares. No idea what that means. We thought it was ju the judgment day, and sat upright. While drearysome arose the howl of wakened hounds, the mouse let fall the altar crumb. The worms drew back into the mounds. The glaive cow drooled till God called, till God called no. It's gunnery practice out at sea. Just as before, you went below, and the world as it used to be is as it used to be. All nations striving strong to make red war yet redder. Mad as hatters, they do no more for Christ, Christ, Christ's sake. Then you who are helpless in such matters, that this is not the judgment hour, for some of them's a blessed thing. For if it were, they'd have to save to have to score hell's floor for so much threatening ha ha it will be warmer than i blow the trumpet if indeed i ever do for you are men and rest eternal sorely need so down we lay again i wonder still i wonder will the world ever Saner B said sing become sin or yin sing the saner is compared to the sing so yeah. well the world saner ever saner B mm. said one then said one then when he sent us under our indifferent century and may many a skeleton shook his head instead of preaching forty year my neighbor prison thirdly said I Parson. wish I Thirdly, Parson thirdly said, I wish I had struck two pipes and beer. Against the guns distributed the hour, roaring their readiness to avenge. As far as inland, as far inland, Sorton Tower and Kelmont and Starlit Stonehenge. Stonehenge. Do you know Stonehenge where it is? Yep. Somewhere. That's, that's, that's you know we're a famous landscape right so stones you know anything starlit hinges were camelot all those are meaningful places so. but channel firing what that even means the title channel firing what channel mean? i mean channel can mean a lot of different things english channel right so british channel right so between the wars you know so so he died in 1928 so what the first war time what the first war time first world war what the time first world war anybody know um 1914 I think. 1940 to 1918 this was written years. in 1914 <laughs> is that right yeah. that's where the war started so to begin to war again in between the seas and my friends and the so anyway so you know those days the, the fighting over the sea so he imagined himself being one dead i don't know exactly through the war i guess it was just an ominous poem a little bit scary huh like somebody dead raised from the coffee man so, <laughs> so that's terrible so yeah that's a poem poet they think differently than you do there's some poems, actually mm -hmm. most poems in this book. Yeah. I'm kinda of disappointed because You disappointed? Really, I would really like not uh -huh. of the poems, but uh -huh. of the way they're organized in this book. Ah. Uh -huh. Because I really would like if because the way he organized this book, if he could do a bit more of a commentary on uh -huh. like a, just at least a short commentary on certain poems. On um, certain poems give you interpretation, huh? Yeah, they're yeah. far more enjoyable and understandable when yeah. you when you are given the history and reason why they were written. Yeah. Dude, some poems like. are not that way. Some poems express an idea that don't need background, yeah. but yeah. most poems so far have needed background. We're a much needed one. This one is same. We're a much needed one. So, yeah, he wrote in 1914 exactly. Well, hardy. 
Let's move on from him. So, okay, Jared Mally Hopskin, Hopskin, eighteen Hopskin, eighteen forty-four, eighteen eighty-nine. So lived forty-five years old, and he died. Was born in Stratford, England. The eldest of eight children, he won a prize for his poetry in high school, which was to be the most recognition he received for his work until long after his death. Upskin studied classics and the Balliol College, Oxford, and converted to the Roman Catholic Church, which greatly estranged him from his Protestant family. He became a Jesuit, Jesuit, and Jesuit. Two years later, the symbolically burned his poems. Though, fortunately, he had sent some copies to his Oxford friends, Robert Bridges. For years, he did not write. Hopkins was appointed to the charitable Greek and Latin University College in Dublin in 1884. Weak and exhausted from his academic and military duties, he wrote a series of dark sonnets, or sonnets of. Desolation. He died from what was that word? Typhoid. Typhoid fever, reported due to Dublin's polluted water supply. Apart from a couple of appearances in anthology anthologies, none of Hopkins' work was published until Bridges ended his poems in eighteen nineteen eighteen, nearly thirty years after his death. Well. No one you take. I can already、it. tell that this guy both converted、thoughts. to、mm-hmm. Catholicism and had most problems in his life because of his intellectual pursuits. Yeah,、mm. it completely ruined his life. Oh, studying、okay. classics—that's probably he, why he joined the Roman. <laughs> yeah,、uh, Greek and Latin. So,、right. professor on that. So, go ahead. Do you want me to read the first yeah, one? Yes. Okay. God's grandeur. The world is charged with the grandeur of God. It will flame out like shining from shook foil. It gathers to a greatness like the ooze of oil, crushed. Says the note here: the grandeur of God will rise and be manifest as oil rises and collects from crushed olives or grain. I don't know what that's from. Why do men then now not wreck his rod? Heed his law. Generations have trod, have trod, have trod, and all is seared with trade, bleared, smeared with toil, and wears man's smudge and shares man's smell. The soil is bare now, nor can foot feel being shod. What does a smudge mean? Is that like a weird stuff? Like a smudge of dirt or something? Oh, okay. And for all this, nature is never spent. There lives the dearest freshness deep down things. The poet omits the preposition in or within before things, so it would be deep down with or within things. And though the last lights off the black west went, when King Henry the Eighth broke from the Catholic Church in fifteen thirty four and established the Church of England. O、oh, morning, at the brown brink eastward springs, because the Holy Ghost over the bent world, over the bent world, broods, broods with warm breast and with ah bright wings. Oh, I want to read this one a little bit. You came to understand before. God grandeur. The world is a charge with the grandeur of God, grandeur of God. It will flame out like a shining from shook foil. It gathers into a greenness like the oats of oil crushed. Why do men then now not wreck his rod? Generations have trod and trod and trod, and all is seared with tree, blear smeared with toil, and wears man's smart or sheer man's smell. The soil is a bare now, nor can food fill. Being shod, and for all this, nature is never spent. There lies the dearest of freshness, deep down things, and though the last lies off the blank west wind, 
all morning. And the, break, and the brown break its word springs because the Holy Ghost over the bend world brews with warm breasts and ah, bright winds. Wow, I still don't understand. So, <laughs> okay. Uh, comments? Anything? The worst. Were intellectual poems, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Nothing? Okay. We'll move on. Esther, next one. Hide beauty. Is too, too, this poem too much for us? Huh? We don't have a lot of understanding of this poem, right? Yeah. So, so you, you guys want to move on? Move to... Something more modern. So, oh, Israel Palm. Let's move to page 324. We're going to start from there. So, Israel, Israel Palm. Page what? 324. Okay. This this is a modern poet. Okay. Ezra Pound, eighteen eighty five to nineteen seventy two. So he's died worthy. The great literature literary mentor of modernism. Modernism was born in Haley, Idaho, but raised mostly in Philadelphia, where his father worked for the U.S. Mint. In 1901, the 16-year-old Pond enrolled at the University of Pennsylvania, but soon transferred to Hamilton College to study foreign languages. Throughout his career, he not only translated widely from eight languages, also published in Italian and French. Suddenly in London, Pond began the major creative undertaking of the life, the what the cantons? Yeah. Cantons. Also, in the Paris for four years, where he linked up with the American immigrants, now known as the Lost Generation. Setting in Italian, nineteen twenty-four, Pong became a devoted admirer for Bernito Miss Mussolini. You know, do you guys know this personality? No idea. Esther, you know this personality? Eh? No idea? No history, background? Mussolini, don't even know Mussolini? Mussolini is actually fascism where it came from. Okay, so, so he's, a, he's a head of Hitler actually. So this is an Italian dictator. So. Okay, so he broadcast city had the American settlements for the entire government radio show during World War II was indicted in absentee for treason, arrested in 1945. Through the efforts of his literary friends, Pound was declared unfit for trial by reason of insanity, confined to a mental hospital where he remained for 13 years. He was finally discharged in 1958 and soon returned to Italy. Pound died. In Venice. Well, that's very colorful life. Okay. <laughs> anyway, uh, we're going to start with uh, the return. So, you guys like this or want to move on? This is not to the personality thing. But let's read. Actually, the poem is very famous. So. Okay. Uh, Esther, read the second one, the return. They return I'll see the tentative movements and the slow feet. The trouble in the pace and the uncertain waver. See they return one by one, with fear as half awakened, as if the snow should hesitate and murmur in the wind, and half turn back. These were the winged with awe. Invoilable. What that word means, no well, invoilable. Where is it? Invoilable. 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 
that right? Are you guys so hungry? Your stomach is in Wallaba? <laughs> yeah. Actually, I don't know. I, would I don't know either. Unable to be violent. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Gods of the winged shoe, with them the silver hound, sniffing the trace of air. Hi. 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 That's pretty much perfect. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's what it said. It's greeting, bro. I hate a lot. That's where it came from. Seriously. I thought it was hail. Huh? Hell Hitler? Hell. Hell Hitler? No, hi Hitler. Uh, hi yeah. Hitler? Yeah. Yeah, you don't I, know that? Every movie told you that in first, uh, second world of all time. Hi Hitler. That's where it came from, basically. Hell is the English word. German don't say hell. I see. Say hi. What if hi, they said hi? Heil? Ah, <laughs> but this is a very ominous poem. I don't like it. So let's move on. That's terrible, my first. <laughs> Bad meanings. Okay, I don't like this poem, man. Okay, let's look at the garden. From there. The garden. Garden in page 330. Elijah, can you read for us? We're on two. I think it's 326. <laughs> no, it's right here. 330. 330. Oh, just garden? Yeah. Just garden. There's a garden. Okay. Oh, that's different person. That's why I'm sorry. Okay. Is it the garden or garden? Let's let's read the garden then. So, because that's one and we one or two. That's it. Come on. Simmer now. I, I found that uh, uh, Naomi's word excitable. I like that. You need to be a singer on a pope. Pope. Because those are people <laughs> excited. So. The garden. Like a skein of loose silk blown against a wall, she walks by a rail the railing of a path in Kingston Gardens. And she is dying piecemeal of sort of emotional anemia. And around about there is a rabble of filthy, sturdy, unlikable infants. What? Unkillable. Of, whoa. Unkillable infants of the very poor. And they shall inherit the earth. In her is the end of breeding. Her boredom is exquisite and excessive. She would like someone to speak to her and almost afraid and is almost afraid that I will commit that indiscretion. These are weird poems. I have no idea what they're talking about. Yeah. Uh, uh oh. <laughs> this, this, this is like a yeah. in the so. <laughs> Well, I definitely far for short English <laughs> appreciation, you know. So there's things challenged. Well, this me. book is not that good. This it has a good collection, but this it doesn't collect it well. <laughs> it doesn't collect it well. It doesn't give you a lot of. Uh, uh, thing to, uh, to, to give background to understand things, yeah. especially poems are enigmatic, you know, so yeah. Yeah, But poems are supposed to be like that sometimes. I'll read sea rules. Stop. I'll what? Okay. Well, we're going to discuss now about what are you going to write. You have homework. That's what you're going to Okay. Let's write a poem about almonds and suckers. Okay. That's okay. Oh, huh? <laughs> <laughs> She's funny. No. Okay. Astronomy. No. No. Oh, yeah. No. He had a lot to say. Okay. Let's see. Um, no? Noah's okay. leather jacket. Stop being yeah. goofy. <laughs> You're serious. Oh. Okay. Uh, that's He's interesting. I thought that I was a serious one, man. So Elijah was a goofy one. <laughs> really? Naomi's always been goofy. Naomi always goofy. I'm yeah. Didn't say the only, but usually are. Okay. If you got choose the right topic, I'm going to write a while. Oh. If we don't, we don't forget about this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, there we go. Esther's phone is a good topic. Yeah, and how much yeah. she's on it. Facts put you. Uh, no, I'll give some options. Three of them. Then we choose one. 
No goofy ones. Serious talk. Um, so it's lesson one, to smell a spring. It's like, so that actually kind of makes me want to sneeze. I know. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's terrible. You <laughs> <laughs> have an allergy really going on. on. Uh, Turn right your allergy. A chew. <laughs> okay. The smell of snow. A chew goes that. The smell of snow? Yeah. It has a smell? And the smell of roses. What that's about the smell of rain? Smell the rain. There you go. Okay, that's it. The Decided. The rain. Um, smell the rain. Like, uh, All right. Have you something about I'm good at smell rain. The rain. Let's go rain. I'm it's done. I don't rain. want spring. Well, listen, the smell of rain. Okay. No rain. The smell of so rain. So that's a title. Yep. Okay. Smell rain. Okay. Mm. Okay. Decided.